All right, guys, this is uh, actually take number two. I had my silly uh, mouse go out, the batteries went out, went dead. So, get to try it again. What the downside is that means that we're now reduced in time, so I'm gonna try to talk quick. This is just gonna be a weird week. and I'm already uh, feeling the effects of this energy, uh, twists and turns unexpected stuff the choices that you've got to make wise in the road i've got a lot of different names for this report and one of them is uh timeline jumping one of them is the great turning what is right is wrong wrong is right you thought that was a thing before well just wait for this week all right so Here's our summary slide, and already you can start to see some weird anomalies. First of all, the dream bot is not, in my opinion, overlapped with anything in the astrology or the I Ching. <clears throat> I think it matches more of the solution. It's the great turning, in my opinion. Um, it shows progress, and the collective unconscious, the, co the collective unconscious very strongly is seeing updates, progress, uh, turning. That's why I'm calling it the great turning. Things are turning around. But also, ironically, metaphorically, it means the other form of turning. Like every, there's like these twists and turns everywhere. Um, things are turning. Values are going upside down. You're going to see in the rave. That's, that's more of the uh, solution. All right, let me keep this simple because for the new folks, I'm probably talking about things you're not familiar with. Here's the influence. Um, it's whatever is causing us to tread carefully, but if you can infer a, an influence from treading carefully for the from the I Ching, that's what the whole astrology is all about. We're in between eclipse seasons, so things are unpredictable. We have Venus and Jupiter stepping into a new place. That always shakes things up. Venus has already been in Aries and is uh, in detriment, so weakened. We have Sun and Uranus and sextile Mars. We'll talk about that opportunity. And uh, that represents change, unpredictability, and a whole lot more. And then you've got the Jupiter and Neptune, what we've been talking about. Um, we also have two retrograde planets by the end of this week. Pluto is already retrograde. So control, subconscious, um, power has been reversed, maybe past-oriented, maybe um, deriving power and control from past experience, possibly. And then Mercury is going to go run retrograde by the 10th. <laughs> so ultimately, excuse me, let me take a break here. As I look down on the weather radar, big storm inbound. So you might, we've already started seeing the rain happening and a little bit of thunder, but you might start seeing the uh, effects of that, either flashes of light or, or whatever, but it's coming in. All right, so um, possible, I, I have no idea what to call this, this particular surf report. Um, Part of me wants to call it the why in the road. So you have to make decisions. You're going to have to make difficult decisions because you're going to be treading carefully. Um, part of me wants to do this timeline jumping because we're looking into the future with the sun and Uranus over the north node. I mean, give me a break. And then the great turning is something coming from the dream bot. But it doesn't look like there's overlap with the dream bot and the influence. But I think the influence and the solution is all melded into one, and it, it's pretty crazy. And uh, values tend to get flipped over, as we'll see from the rave, and, um, and things are turning, but looking up, progress, we're being updated, consciousness is being updated. That's from the dream, by, by the way. All right, shall we? I mean, we're in between eclipses, okay? So it's, it should have been like the quiet, quiet before the storm or or whatever, I don't think it's going to be quiet at all this week. I think it's going to be pretty disruptive. Might be a good word for it. All right, let's get started. The 
And a shout out to a few um, folks. First of all, everybody who commented, thank you. And I really do appreciate not just the comment and helping out the algorithm, but the, the meaning behind it. We're, we're together. We're a tribe and uh, very supportive of each other. My name is D Hearts. Oh, I say Hearts plural because not just mine, but clearly in the comments on YouTube where other surf members are saying our heart goes out to you. And so, uh, yeah, it, intensity is real and death around you and your family and apparently having to uh, administrate some of that. So heart goes out to you. My name is D. Um, shout out to Bluebird. I don't recall seeing a comment from you before, so thank you. And very valuable. I really appreciate that. Selena, shout out from uh, Maui and aloha to you. And Sarah gives us some pretty good advice. I think very sound. It says, it's easy to try and find the inner critic when seeking self-acceptance. It can be more difficult to learn to hold the inner critic in compassion with the rest of your emotions. <laughs> that sounds so brilliant. Let's all remember to do that, especially this week, as we try to clean up our, our slate, our consciousness, so that we can cast our best future onto that. And going back to like the timeline jumping or, or future casting, and we'll get into that. As soon as we talk about the astrology, not for me to say, says, uh, things are getting done, but so many decisions can be overwhelming. Oh my God, this is the energy. Not for me to say is already feeling the energy that I'm expecting this week. Shout out to all of you over at YouTube and then over to rumble, uh, babuska bitch talks about the origin of that name. I'm so happy to read the uh, traditions there and the totem and and um, how it, uh, I don't know, it's like a recovering from an enforcement of a religion, I guess. If I, I hope I got that right. So thank you for sharing that. Shout out. Not for me to say as a comment on YouTube and Rumble. Thank you. Uh, shout out to Philly 369 Garden. Right on, brother. Well done. And to you too. I hope your channel's going well. Shout out to Mills One Oxford and says there's a Rumble app. And so go get it. Shout out to all of you commenters. All right, let's get into the dream bot. Check this out. Number one word and Number two word, update and progress. Look at that, 131 surge score. That is huge. So there's an update and there's progress. Ladder, ways, turning. There's that great turning. Things are turning. Things are looking up. Things are updating. There's progress. And there's that word consciousness. That's an unusual word in the dream bot. I don't think we've seen that very much, if at all. Yeah, low surge score, but... That's impressive that it's even there. So do we have an upgrade in consciousness? Check this out. Linguistic set number one. Strong, nice. The collective unconscious is feeling nice and strong. Strong, nice, follow, yeah. Happen, darkness, internet. Hmm, very interesting. Just interesting. Happen, darkness, internet. I will just leave it at that. So that's an exciting dream bot. Let's get into the astrology. Um, like I mentioned before, you've got Jupiter in going into Aries towards the end of this week. We'll discuss that. We got Mercury retrograde starting at the end of the week, going back into Taurus all the way through May, and uh, and then going back direct in the next month. In June, you got the lunar eclipse coming up on the 15th. That's a uh, in Scorpio over the south node. So the past is coming into this. And then we've got Sun square Saturn that we will discuss at length. Let's get started. Cinco de Mayo. Happy Cinco de Mayo, Thursday, the 5th of May. 
Yes, it is celebratory because of Cinco de Mayo. And uh, having been an exchange student to Guatemala, I like this holiday. It reminds me of my time down there. Learned a lot in that culture. All right. So here we go. There's the biggest, most important alignment of the week as we head towards an eclipse. This is Sun, North Node, and Uranus. All are in a conjunction. Okay. And it's in Taurus. That's not the only thing. But this is the sun, which is our ego, our identity, the light that we're shining on the world is over the North Node. And the North Node is life purpose, future-oriented. Uranus is also future-oriented. It's the rebellion, but it's future-oriented. Very insightful Uranus, change. So ego is wedged between future and future. And so it's going to be a future self. Future self in and in even being bullheaded about it. So it's not all that creative of a way, but here's your opportunity. So uh, these three cast characters going into the future for self and identity have a sextile, double, triple sextile over to Mars and Neptune. And Mars and Neptune are going to enter into, into a conjunction, and that's not very meaningful. But the opportunity here is to carry out um, what you're imagining, and what you're imagining is influenced by Jupiter, just because they're four degrees away. And so this is a very positive thing that you're imagining with Neptune. Very positive, very wise. So... Ultimately, later on this week, you'll be able to carry out spiritually, Pisces, you'll be able to spiritually carry out what you're positively imagining as an opportunity for your future self. I call this future casting. We're going to call it dream boarding or whatever. This is about you designing your future and going to go get it. All right, let's get started on Friday. Check this out, the absence of squares. This is what it looks like, folks. I know you haven't seen too much of it. This is what an alignment, a day of astrology looks like without any squares. And enjoy it because you only get one day because tomorrow there'll be sun, square, Saturn. And bleh, more pressure. But for now, you've got your future casting. <clears throat> Sorry, so still some... Uh, some junk in there. <clears throat> Overall healthy. Uh, I think there was something in the coffee that's uh, created some phlegm. Now the storm, the, the tree is basically sideways, so you probably see some flashes of light here pretty soon. The weather radar looks really dark and awful. But anyway, let's proceed. So we've got glimpses of ins insight as your opportunity for the future self um, on both sides. So you've got um, your place in the world. That's a very Pisces thing. And your ability to carry out what it is you're dreaming about and being able to realistically see yourself in the future. And this is an opportunity. So you get to design it. So this is an opportunity this week, by the way, while I'm mentioning it, the sun is going to go past the North node as we head into the 15th of uh, May as in another eclipse, the lunar eclipse. It's going to be a full moon, but the sun's going to be past the North node, but conjunct with the North node. So it's focused on the future. And that's casting light and DNA packets to the moon. But the moon's over the south node. So the past, past emotional content is coming up in Scorpio. So it's uh, sort of dark and then literally gets dark because the, sun, uh, the earth is going to get in between the sun and the moon perfectly to cast a shadow on the moon. So we're going to turn it blood red. But the, basically that sun that's got the future casting 
is going to get occluded from the moon. And so the moon over the south node is just going to be totally helpless to past material, past Scorpio sort of material, karmic past. Could be very ugly. Now that's the that's the eclipse. And that's why I'm show, I'm telling you that this week is a huge, huge opportunity for you to design your future. And you've got multiple alignments to be able to do this. So the the triple cast over here with the sextile opportunity over here, you put it all together and you get uh, the combine these for dream boarding, future casting, and manifesting your dreams. And the dreams will be positive. The dreams will be positive. I'm hypnotizing all of you. I'm suggesting into your subconscious that your dreams will be wise and positive. And that's going to be positive for your opportunity to future cast and dream board. So do it. Spend time with that. Because on Saturday, the 7th, this sun sextile, uh, sun square Saturn begins. This puts pressure on it. This doesn't change anything of what we talked about. You still have the sextiles. You have a stronger Mars ability with carrying out your dreams in a sextile with future ego. So it's all there. Future casting is there. In fact, now it's it's pressurized. There's more focus on it. In, in other words, I was at first suggesting that you do it. Now it's going to turn into you're going to be forced to do it. You're not going to really have a choice or it's going to feel like you're forced to look into the future. All right, so here's how I see it. Uh, you got the future ego uh, seeking worth, seeking self-worth in Taurus. So, so very worth-oriented and finding value. And that is in conflict with or pressurized with the self, the the future self fr freely, so Aquarian, freely finding the most meaningful struggle, that's Saturn, towards self-esteem, self-worth, and life purpose. And then you got to throw in the collective well-being because that's Aquarius too. So this all puts you on a really good path to a fulfilling life, but it's not going to be easy. It's not going to feel great. It's going to feel more like a struggle. I would, uh, starting on Saturday, I would move into struggle. I would purposefully move into struggle and I would help, I would allow that to help you instruct, though I'm pointing to the sextile now, your future self. So help it instruct your future casting. You can go, I don't want this. I don't want this struggle. How do I change it? How do I make it better? How do I see myself on the other side of this struggle? And um, and it's going to be in a an Aquarian status quo arrangement. Saturn in Aquarius is is grinding down the ego, putting everything into doesn't feel good, but it's a struggle towards freedom, disclosure, technology, etc. Sunday the 8th, um, everything is stronger. So the sun is in between North Node and Uranus a little bit more. All of them together, Uranus a little bit edging a little bit closer to uh, the North Node. So getting in a little bit stronger, both future-oriented. Uranus obviously shaking things up and changing. But you've got a T-square now on Uranus and the sun. So this, like I said before, before... In this week, you could choose to sit in your quiet space and do your future casting and your imagination and seeing you uh, in your best future, carrying out your life purpose, getting self-worth. But now on Sunday, Saturday and Sunday, you're going to be forced with this, probably. You're going to feel trapped in it. I would just stay there. Stay there, quiet it down, sort of like the inner critic with Sarah talked about the inner critic and Instead of fighting it or instead of uh, questioning it or uh, trying to improve it, how about just sit with it? Let it be there. 
and show compassion towards it because it can instruct you on your future casting. I would not stop future casting because just because there's a T-square on it. I would honor that struggle and move into it. Monday the 9th is the second day of a T-square, so the emphasis stays on that. And we also have this, this hidden sextile that's there all week. We just... We got so many other alignments. Look at the moon. The moon's got two squares, three uh, in conjuncts, and one opposition. That's a lot on the emotions. And the emotions need to be seen. They need to be recognized, according to Leo. But this alignment here is another sextile that's hidden all week because it's the further out planets, the deeper in the subconscious is Pluto sextile, Jupiter and Neptune. So all week, the most powerful transformative energy. You have it there. That only adds to your ability to future cast. So I would, this is a big foot stomper. If you haven't heard this already, you've got to spend time with yourself quietly visualizing in a positive light, your positive future, your best future, your most relevant future to your life purpose, bringing your passions. Um, and now watching the post office trying to deliver mail in this storm is interesting. All right. Tuesday, the 30th, we have Sun and Saturn are for and a half degrees away, so getting a little bit stronger. Everything I mentioned there, Wednesday. Now, Wednesday is interesting because only one square, lots of alignments on the moon. So moon is not lots of easy energy and oppositions. So balancing act in Virgo, so very discretionary. But it's very earthy. It's a grand earth trine. So it can bring your future casting into the real world because you have you're so close to it anyway with your five senses in the uh grounded state and so um it brings a lot of realism it brings a lot of um practical energy towards your future casting so i would sit with yourself especially on today and see how real this future casting feels to you by now if you've been doing this every day it's starting to get into the subconscious and uh, you're programming the subconscious at the same time. So it makes it easier to carry out. All right. Well, I've got to tell you that storm is really um, distracting. All right. Influence in the I Ching. Lots of yang lines, except for one yin line. All that will get reversed when we get into the solution, but treading carefully, competent people find their way and make progress, even in difficult circumstances. At this time, a relatively humble force or person is having an influence over the stronger one. That felt like the collective unconscious is recognizing it. The great turning, that's what I'm calling it. Tables are turning, but there's also twists and turns. So the turning is not just one way to look at it. It's all the metaphors. So things are turning, but you also have the road ahead of you is turning and twisting and you've got to make decisions in the whys and the road. And so you got to walk and tread carefully. Line one, conscientious work is rewarded when one's motives are simple and intentions genuine. I would recommend when you're future casting to include this, make your intentions genuine. I would not make them because you have to, or because mom said so, or um, uh, your religion says this. Make it very personal, but very make it very authentic and real. Simplicity in action will leave you free to obligation, free of obligation. Line four: the most important thing is to take action when conditions are favorable. So timing is going to be very important this week. Resolute conduct in the face of danger and a clear-eyed assessment of the situation are the only means of successful resolution. So resolve. 
uh, be willing to face danger or discontent or anxiety or your inner critic. Turn in, turn into. And line six, by assessing the results of your past efforts, you can know what to expect going forward. This, in my opinion, is all focused on the coming eclipse. It's a foreshadowing. Look at that. Make all the changes, and we get all yin lines and one yang. Organized discipline. We've been through this before recently. It's about being in the right team. The right team means that we have values that are similar and harmonious. Okay? And um, if you don't have a leader, be the leader. If you feel called to do so, create solidarity is essential for success. All right, now we put in a calculator. We want the ego, the future casting ego on that T-square. And it's uh, hexagram 23. And Aries solution, sidereal Aries. Here's where my mouse went out here last version. All right, we're splitting apart. And so amorality <laughs> Sound familiar? The awareness and understanding, which leads to the acceptance of diversity. But prophetizing, this is where you um, try to convert other people into your belief system. The attempt to undermine one set of values for another. The sage who in the extreme can defend evil as part of the greater good. That's the extreme of this undermining one set of values for another. This is part of the great turning. Don't you see this? It says the powerful expression of an insight which will undermine established values. It's the turning of values. The tables are turning. The great turning. There's twists and turns. What is good is bad. What's right is wrong. The missionary who's very light will bring darkness. Whew. Oh, imagine that. This happens so many times throughout the ages, hasn't it? Huh. The powerful expression of an insight which will produce negative effects. Wow. Interesting. So let's get into our solution slide. And this is just one. Oh, let me get that in so you can see it better. So I put the Y in the road and I think you're going to have lots of different branches this week as your road of life twists and turns, a lot of surprises and a lot of forcing you to make decisions. A lot of time your decisions are between two unacceptable outcomes or maybe more than two, but like a catch 22 situation or rock in a hard place and you have to choose. Uh, I think you're going to see a lot of that. So why in the road is just one small facet of today of this week's energy. We're in between eclipses. The energies explode into oddity. Oxymorons, challenges, and weird opportunities arise in the tropical astrology. Meanwhile, the I Ching warns of energies that require treading carefully. So that's part of treading carefully is making the right choices, right? But it's only one small aspect of it and don't forget that timeline jumping i think uh well uh, we're, we're getting there wait hold on this is the solution now the iching sevens was the organized discipline where we go one we go all remember that help create solidarity be the strong leadership if you're called to do so the rave talks about pros 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 proselytizing the attempt to undermine one set of values for another. Um, we'll talk about that. Sidereal Aries, direct, transparent. This is our second week of Aries solution. Watch out for impulsiveness, but be strong, be confident. So here we go with the overall triangulation. This week, our future-oriented ego is caught in change, Uranus, and transformation, Pluto. Making it a tricky... Oh, I forgot to mention the sun is making a trine to Pluto. So easy energy, easy to transform. Oh, that was... It all leads to future casting for your ego and your identity. 
making it, but making it a tri- tricky week energetically. Why? Because Uranus shakes things up and Pluto transforms and annihilates and death and rebirth and all that stuff. So it may not feel all that great, might feel very unpredictable. And that's what we've got going on. And now in the solution triangulation, signs of increased polarity arise as we are encouraged to foster solidarity, while the rave signals that value sets might become inverted. Ends might justify non-acceptable means this week. We're already starting to see that right now as people are, are people who used to be in charge or are in charge seem like they're going to much more severe ends in order to make their outcomes or trying to reach their goals. So you're going to see this not just in yourself, but look for people who ends might justify their means instead of the means justifying the ends. Assess more the outcomes and less about the approach to determine right action. But keep in mind the laws of karma. In other words, you too are going to be faced with catch-22s, decision matrices, um, incompatible evidence, uh, contradictions, and whatnot. So this week is one of those weeks where it's not wrong to not follow your value sets. It's not wrong to take a break from certain values. And um, it doesn't mean go break the law. It doesn't mean, you know, all, you know, all these things, but uh, look for it. You'll see a lot of people doing it. doesn't make it right. But when it comes, push, push comes to shove, you always have that right for survival, self-protection, as long as you're not infringing on other people's rights for happiness. And that's why I'm saying keep in mind the laws of karma. You can sort of not break, yeah, but sort of break rules this week. It's sort of a rule breaking that sort of a week. So, I don't know. If you're more of like a Virgo or or more of the earth signs like Taurus, you'll have probably have a hard time with this. Um, this is a week where it's going to be hard to stay in this matrix of right and wrong and label everything as good or bad. It's going to be a hard week to do that. And if you're trying to do that, I don't think you're going to have a lot of success this week. Okay. You're going to be a lot of adaption. A lot of things are, uh, whack, wacky, contradictory, and that kind of thing. All right, let's move on. With the airy solution, you have the power and tenacity to confront what is wrong, unjust, unfair, etc. The trick is to foster camaraderie instead of increased conflict. It goes across the board as if you decide to break your value set or break some rules here and there or go into these fuzzy boundaries, you know, those, those types of things. Then in all cases, make sure it fosters camaraderie instead of increasing conflict. Assert yourself, but try to become part of a cohesive team before noticing values being undermined or threatened. In other words, go do that now. Make sure you're part of that team that hasn't changed. We came off of a week of uh, being very introverted, being away socially. That pendulum has sort of swung. You do need to be with a group that is meaningful to you and shares your values. Don't forget about future casting with your identity. Next week, this door closes as the total lunar eclipse. Um, Spend ample time imagining your future self, dream boarding, calling into existence this future positive part of you this future life purpose, this future vision of you living your life in the best best outcome, the timeline jumping. Go into your positive future all day, every day. You want to hammer it home, okay? You've got to get more details in it. As you're imagining, 
You want to see colors. You want to see actions. Like what exactly are you doing? And you want to see the exact things that you, you know, you're actually doing and seeing that vividly. And it's always best in order to manifest these things is to put emotion to it. So generate emotion doesn't really matter, positive or negative, just the bigger the energy, the better for manifesting. So you've got the thoughts and imagining, maybe you're drawing it out, maybe you're putting it into artwork, but you're also putting, um, you're also putting emotion into it. So I, the, the quote that you can use, the affirmation, I see my best self vividly in my best future. That is this week. Keep your eye on that as things tend to get weird. Oxymorons everywhere. Value sets just going out the window. Not not out the window, but reversed. A complete reversal. We've already seen this. <laughs> look at the look at the leak and how that contradicts um, the whole narrative from before, all the mandates. It's totally opposite. This this energy is already playing out. All right, everybody. Man, I, I hope you uh, got something out of this. I hope it's helpful. Uh, the main things are future casting. I wouldn't put the emphasis on trying to uh, skirt around established rules and laws and all that, but, but, um, or trying to change your value sets. I wouldn't put a lot of focus on that, but just be on the lookout for it. Okay. Other than that, I would focus your entire inten attention on future oriented ego, future in oriented, uh, life purpose. Okay. Your life, your individual life, vividly seeing that play out seeing what you're going to be doing and create it. All right. Oh, all right. Well, it looks like the storm has died down and I'm going to go ahead and uh, get on with my day. Everybody enjoy. And we will see you next week. Let me, let me see. See, that will be next surf report will be four days before that eclipse. So we'll talk all about that, obviously. All right, everybody. Enjoy treading carefully. Talk to you later.